Spotlight, presented by Community Health Network. Welcome back. More than 3 million Americans suffer from epilepsy. Most people can take medications to control it. However, up to 30% of people who have ep epilepsy rather don't respond to drug therapy. News 8's Brittany Elba reports for the first time a new experimental cell therapy that aims to eliminate seizures without medication or invasive brain surgery. They can strike anytime, anywhere. Now a new clinical trial for epilepsy is using a regenerative brain cell procedure to stop seizures. Our goal there is to actually um, achieve seizure freedom. Standard epilepsy treatment begins with medications, then removal of the parts of the brain causing the seizures, but there is a risk of damaging healthy brain tissue. Now doctors at UC San Diego are using MRI guidance to pinpoint the exact area causing the seizures. Then cells derived from stem cells are injected. This therapy offers us the opportunity to not destroy tissue but to actually rehabilitate it and recover it. The first patient they treated was a 38-year-old man who had five to eight seizures a month, two months after the procedure. He's had better than a 95% reduction in his seizures, which is tremendous. Doctors hope as time goes by, he may even become seizure-free. I'm Brittany Noble for WishTV, wishtv.com, or follow us on Facebook for updates. Well, the very first patient to have regenerative cell therapy in New York experienced 30 seizures a month. Now, a year after that treatment, that person is seizure-free. Both patients are part of a national clinical trial. Patients who participate must have temporal lobe epilepsy and will be monitored for two years after that procedure. Phil. This TV's your education station. One UND grad is using her honors project to understand how language barriers impact patients in healthcare settings. Mary Burton says that she discovered that there was little known about language barriers in the health industry and that most patients are happy with the care they receive, but physicians are not. She says despite patients being pleased to have access to health care, language barriers impact the depth of the care they can receive. And just letting patients know that they're welcome and not creating that fear or being uncomfortable to come in and feeling like you're like in positioning them. Um, I think that is a really big thing, but also just trying to train more healthcare professionals and try, I know like people are busy, but just taking a little extra effort to make your patient feel comfortable, I think really goes a long way. Burton says uh, the project can inform practices and policies to improve patient care and promote health equity for patients with different linguistic and cultural backgrounds. However, she encourages facilities and physicians to advertise more so non-English speaking patients feel comfortable receiving care. Due to a weakened pelvic floor after pregnancy, many women can experience discomfort and urinary leakage. But Manny Gaither tonight shows you ways to improve symptoms without turning to surgery. Four weeks after giving birth, Nicole Lucan started feeling pressure in her pelvic area. It just felt very heavy. And so knowing my body, I knew something wasn't right. Lukens was diagnosed with a prolapsed bladder, the result of a weakened pelvic floor causing discomfort and leakage. One option was surgery. I'm thinking that's just not going to happen because surgery means I can't lift my baby afterwards. It's just not going to happen. Instead, Lukens' doctor referred her to pelvic floor therapy aimed at alleviating symptoms by strengthening those muscles. This myth that once we've had kids or as we get older, we're just going to start leaking and we'll just lose control of these muscles and it's just gone. Um, is sad and it's definitely not true. Tessa Ladd, an occupational therapist with Orlando Health, helped to teach Lucan's new ways to breathe and move to support the pelvic floor. With consistency, with education, with training, you really can regain control of these muscles and you really can start to learn how to coordinate them and use them so that you don't have pain or leaking um, or any risk for prolapse. A lot of it was yoga moves and how I was breathing and stretching. Now about nine months postpartum and Lucan says her doctor is amazed with her progress. I don't really have very many symptoms at all, but it is something I work on daily. <laughs> For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. All right, new severe thunderstorm warning for Rush County right now. The severe thunderstorm was located about 12 miles east of Shelbyville, moving at 20 miles per hour, so a slow moving. A low end thunderstorm warning with winds of about 60 miles per hour. You need winds of about 58 for a thunderstorm warning. That's where we are. 
Hail not large enough for the warning, but some heavier downpours, strikes of lightning as the system continues to travel very slowly. I think flooding will be the biggest concern here. Your full forecast coming up. Wish TV. We are local.